Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have quite a show for you today with uh, Tim Alexander giving us an emergency report. And if you look at the news updates, you'll see that the Pope is now resigning due to health reasons. Uh, it may well be a combination of things, but I don't know the specifics about his health. But we do know about the prophecies of St. Malachi, and to give us a little insight, we have Tim Alexander, who's a historian and geopolitical military analyst. Uh, Tim, tell us what the latest what's going on. Well, um, he's resigning at the end of this month, uh, Rome time at uh, 8 p.m. on February 28th. Um, and uh, it, he's going to briefly live at Castle... Uh, I can't pronounce it. I'm getting over the flu like you. And um, he, uh, which is a part of the Vatican City State, is outside of Rome. And, and by, by the way, when I did pick up the flu from flying back into Culture 2 from Florida, I took our nutraceuticals and it knocked it out very promptly. Yeah. Uh, I can tell from this flu, if I hadn't had my fancy Nutrameds, he would have probably been in the hospital. Uh, and we're going to send a care package to you to make sure we get yeah. you recovered because you had a rough, rough night last night, yeah, five I've hours in the ER just trying to ER breathe. So. And, uh, but you right. know, now, I, anybody I who thinks lot, that the flu is not a big deal, stuff, and I take uh, I take garlic and a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think you'd run out of you'd run out of some of the things. I always tell people uh, keep a reserve of Nutridines, Alamed, etc. Yeah, yeah Nutridine because is very good, and I'm out. This may not be the final wave, by the way, of the flu. The flu is going is not peaked yet. It may mutate during this wave, or number two, it could back come back in a year or two. But each time, it's got accumulating genes. It has a gene from the 1918, 2009 H1N1 flu. It has new gene copies that allow it to attach to the receptor binding domain. And it has more replicant genes that make it more lethal than any other flu since 1968, the Asian flu. Well, so you know, what people well, should realize is that this is a very, very bad flu. It has by yes, no means peaked. Yes, absolutely. And in my case, uh, even though I'm overweight and 62 years old, I, I, take a, I, I take a lot of healthy stuff. I don't eat as healthy as they should. I, I can't afford to eat you know, all organic. But, uh, I, uh, w- but anyway... Uh, <laughs> I uh, I think in my case, I didn't get the full blast of the flu, but what I got was upward respiratory uh, <clears throat> uh, trouble, and it, it uh, all the drainage got in my chest, and it gave me... Yeah, we call that sinorhinitis and secondary bronchitis, where yeah. it hits you in your upper respiratory, you get a nasty infection there as a nitis in your sinuses, it'll drain and then seed to your bronchi, and then you've got a bronchitic pneumonia. Yeah, I, it, it, and it came on me very quickly. I went... Uh, to Terre Haute, oh, yeah. Indiana, for the ordination of a couple of friends of mine as uh, Eastern Orthodox subdeacons, and uh, my throat was scratchy, and I was coughing, and uh, by that night, uh, uh, night before last, I uh, I couldn't breathe, and uh, I was going out uh, last night to, to buy something uh, to take to try to stop me up, you know, and, and uh, I got so out of breath, I said, that's it, I'm going to the ER, and... Uh, <laughs> when I walked in, they thought I was having a heart attack because, you know, he see this big guy and he says, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> but I said, no, they figured I'm not you're, having, you're having a big one. By the way, EMT training, I know what to look for. And, uh, exactly, and anyway, yeah. so I, I, I feel better, but I'm not feeling too good. Let's get back to Benedict the 16th. Saint yeah, Malachi let's just fill in much of what's going. What does this mean, by the way? Well, what are the various, because alter- there's two alternative views on this. Well, uh, the real question will be who will who will succeed him. The Catholic Church has become a very corrupt institution, and I know Catholics out there don't like to hear this, but I was a lifelong Catholic, and I, I, I was studying to be a deacon, and I got to see things on the inside, and I had cousins that were priests, and uh, I have to tell you, the majority of people I've known in my life that have gone to prison have been Catholic priests for sex crimes. And that's a terrible thing to say. Uh, in fact, I said it to uh, an Orthodox bishop uh, and, and shocked him uh, just uh, uh, Saturday. But the point is, uh, there is no cleaning up the corruption in the Catholic Church without ending the 1,000-year-old rule of mandatory celibacy. And um, uh, so, well, you know, it, 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 it doesn't make even sense that there's celibacy because... Uh, it says right in the in the books of Acts that a, a leader in the church should be a husband of one wife, not yes, five wives yes, or four well, wives Paul, or no wives. That if you don't have your own family, how can you be the pastor over the well, family, yes, which is called the local church? Clearly, 
If a guy can't right. be uh, uh, the uh, can't control his own children, he has no business being a bishop. But anyway, right. uh, be that as it may, and there are historical reasons for that. But uh, it. It, it remains to be seen exactly what happens. The, the, the Supreme Pontiff, the Roman Pontiff, has incredible uh, influence on the, the worldly affairs. We know for a fact that uh, uh, at least a couple of the recent popes had uh, strong Jewish blood. In fact, uh, John Paul II's mother was Jewish, that which made him Jewish. Uh, and, and they have been big supporters of Israel in many ways although they have disagreed with them uh, in certain places. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to, uh, geopolitically how it will affect things. Uh, there will be a new pope elected in March. Um, it will not be, the current pope will not call the conclave. As soon as he resigns, it, it is up to the cardinals to call the conclave, just the same as if he had died. Um, and he will not participate in the concave. The question I have is, will he be considered a uh, uh, cardinal? Uh, but in any case, he's so old, he, he literally uh, just wants to go someplace and and uh, live out his final months or years because he is not in very good health. His doctors told him he couldn't travel anymore and no overseas trips. And um, he, he just, he, he didn't want to end up like the last couple of years of John Paul II. Now, in terms of prophecy, this is very important. And before I forget, Edgar Cayce uh, said that uh, the Pope after John Paul II uh, will be the last. And um, uh, he won't uh, be Pope for that long. Well, this Pope, uh, Benedict XVI, uh, has been Pope for less than eight years. <clears throat> anyway. Which is relatively short by, by Pope standards. Yeah, well, by modern Pope standards. We modern, had, yeah. Uh, yeah, they used to poison them uh, rather quickly. So you yeah, have, That's uh, a way of shortening their lifespan, I guess, uh, in the yeah, past. Somebody slips the arsenic in your, your breakfast, and uh, you check out, and then a new guy gets in. And uh, uh, You have to remember that the Pope was the temporal monarch of most of Italy for many centuries. So it was like electing a king and not only a religious leader. And the Italians, right. uh, you know, the, the powerful families, uh, it was very much a power game uh, to put their one of their family members in the papacy. Um, so, you know, you, you had uh, a lot of uh, poisonings and you had a lot of bribery mm. and everything Well, that's why you had a lot of the members of the, of the Medici family and so on and other high-level, well, very know, wealthy Medici, people would have their but, relative in. Medici were, were, were black nobility. They were uh, uh, Jewish in ours and Khazars. And, uh, uh, you know, that Paul VI probably was also. And they, you, you, in the 1800s, the uh, Vatican uh, accepted the Rothschilds as their bankers. And that's rather like inviting Satan to sit down at your table and, you know, uh, at your family table. Uh, nightly. So, right. uh, anyway, it, it will it remains to be seen. Now, some people say the next pope will be the Antichrist, and I don't accept that. The Antichrist has to be a leader in in Jerusalem. He has to be. A, he also has, by the way, the leader has to be. There's really two leaders. One has to be a geopolitical leader that's a false prophet. Yes. And the other has to be a, a military, in a sense, dictator. Uh, that dictates over Europe, and uh, I see that as a Russian that will eventually form a greater Europe with Eastern and Western Europe unified well, I'm under not, a Russian I, I, I think it, banner. It, it, it's Netanyahu. I think it's Netanyahu. Yeah, well, Netanyahu but, is but definitely... Uh, Here, here's yeah. the interesting thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, when we come back, because this is well, there's a point on the timing. Uh, Get some water for your voice too, uh, Tim. You sound like you're fading fast. Yeah, on us. yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> back, in back in just a moment. Welcome back, and uh, we're trying to get Chris Putnam on the third hour. That'll be very interesting. He wrote a lot of uh, a book about the uh, Petrus Romanus and about these uh, prophecies of Malachi. Um, very, very interesting. Um, well, this is what I think. I, there's a number of things I, converging to the, tell us that. To, so, so please continue with your yeah, thought. Before that, the Tim, break, uh, let me get a swallow of water here. <clears throat> um, 
we uh, there are conflicting theories about the last prophecy that tra- uh, uh, the, the Peter of Rome. Uh, some historians feel that it was added. Uh, I believe it was in the early 1800s. Why do you because, think they would add that? Is well, that a political reason or what? Yeah, some say the Benedictines, uh, because of comments about the last, uh, or the current pope, uh, uh, the glory of the olive. Uh, the olive is is on the is is on the coat of arms of the, the Benedictines. That uh, they they wanted uh, they didn't want. Um, uh, oh, I see. They didn't want the negative uh, yeah, right. uh, pro- uh, things of the prophecies of Malachi to go on the Benedictines. Right. So they created another but, pope in order to take Benedict, all of the... Uh, and, and, and Benedict, uh, the name Benedict, as in the Benedictines, he did choose that name. But the Olive also stands for the Jewish people. And, um, and there's never been a time when the uh, J- Jewish people have been more powerful than right now. Or more in danger. Or more in well, danger. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, on my site today, um, on the first update below the uh, the breaking news on the Pope, um, uh, oh, there, there's a very interesting article. Uh, Obama and Netanyahu accidentally launched World War III. Um, and it is, uh, the link there takes you to Video Rebels blog. And, um, and the, this guy does great work. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure who, who writes the blog, but he does right. great work. And um, he often, by the way, has stuff in there that, that we talk about in the show. So maybe he listens to our show, your show. But anyway, and I, I, I sometimes think he reads my articles, too. I, I, I see some That's stuff. That's good. You, you write some good articles and collect uh Pretty important information, Tim. Well, but what he uh, basically what he la- he lays out, uh, he he places it uh, Monday, April eighth, and Tuesday, April 9th of this year, and uh, on beginning on Tuesday, he lays it out over, uh, you know, uh, literally uh, an hour. Day, days for what? Well, uh, how uh, uh, World War Three could break out in the Middle East very easily, and uh, he, you know he he has. Uh, uh, the Israelis uh, launching a, a, a false flag to try to get us involved in going into Syria, and one thing leads to another, um, and Hezbollah uh, decides to launch all of their missiles, and then the Syrians, uh, their 50 or 60,000 rockets and missiles, the Syrians launch their 100,000 missiles, um, and Netanyahu uh, then begins to nuke the Middle East. The Iranians launch everything, uh, both at Israel and at American bases. And, so and by the way, it, the people should also the understand that when when the attack happened on the mountain of Qum, they not only killed uh, Iranian scientists, they also killed Russian and uh, they yeah, killed well, he, uh, North, North Korean. Involved in, and yeah. uh, uh, he has us involved. And um, also... Uh, then the Pak, uh, the Pakistanis launch uh, several long-range missiles with hydrogen bombs at Israel. Once uh, Israel has has launched uh, nuclear missiles at uh, much of the Muslim world, the Pakistanis right. launch, and then the Pakistanis and the Indians begin launching at one another, and um, it all takes place in a uh, little over an hour. And um, uh, at the end, uh, uh, he has. Uh, uh, General Ashkenazi uh, uh, choked to death uh, Netanyahu in his bunker uh, because uh, Netanyahu has managed to destroy all of Israel. Is this like a novel that he's written? You're talking about uh, this is a, this is an article, uh, but but it's uh, like a short story. And, yeah, it's it, not an, it's it, not a novel. It's a novelette. No, no, no. It's one page. It's a short story, but but it, it lays out a, a sequence of events. That are uh, uh, very probable, very possible, considering uh, where we're at today. In other and, words, uh, uh, it's nuts, but it's, it's it's not out of the question. Uh, unfortunately, the, the really yeah. In other words, is, it's a plausible situation that possible. could happen. God help us. Yes, because uh, you see, everything is very close in terms of distance. There, 
And, uh, yeah, they don't have a uh, warning distance. I heard the warning uh, time yeah. for Pakistan, if an Indian missile comes in, is two minutes. Uh, in your normal Russian U.S. is like 30, 20 minutes. When you have two-minute warning, if you think you're getting attacked, you have to launch, which Absolutely. means that it's if... A hair trigger. It, it, it's a hair trigger. So the same way with Israel, and uh, if they think they're getting attacked by advanced uh, barrage of missiles, they're going to let loose what's called Samson option, which means literally well, hundreds he, of Israel. He, he has that in, 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 in this. Uh, right. He so has it, American and, and Russian uh, officers circumventing their political leaders and uh, jointly attacking the uh, subs with uh, missiles, although uh, too late for Rome and too late for uh, uh, several uh, uh, capitals in Europe, but uh, uh, between Russia it, and the Navy, we take because Rome is supposed to be destroyed after the loss of the last Pope, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, all it, it, the interesting. Uh, that's why this this bit of the Pope's abdication, and that's really what it is. He's sovereign monarch of the Vatican City State. Right. Uh, we use the, today. There, we're, everybody's using the term resignation. But the term that historically is used is abdication. Um, a president might resign, but a monarch abdicates. Um, the the papacy is intimately tied into end time prophecies and prophecies of Armageddon and the Third World War. Now, you of course have to ask yourself: Well, are these prophecies valid, and to what degree, and so forth, and and time. I always say time will tell. Unfortunately, we seem to be living in a time that... Uh, uh, well, we're running out of time. In other words, yeah. uh, we don't set dates here. It could be 20, 30 years from now. Well, yeah. Because things keep on... We keep on having these things, like during the time of Bill Clinton, they brought together Perez, et cetera, and they're going to have a peace treaty, et cetera. But I really think that uh, we have a number of things that are going to happen I this year. I think God has given us... I think we have... We've been having given more than God enough chances, yeah. That he has delayed things on several occasions. Because let me give you a thesis, which I put together on Friday. One another. Yeah, let me give you a thesis that I put together on Friday. I call it Scenario X. Uh, scenario X is what the globalists conceive they perceive has to happen. And they believe they're the, they're the purveyors and the preservers of civilization. So in other words, you've got to get inside the twisted minds of evil globalists to think that they're going to preserve civilization. Which leads to the reason why, why they want to do it, and why they consider us what I call... Uh, if you want to call it, World War Z, which is coming up with Brad Pitt this summer. They consider us the zombies. And in, in the zombie uh, idea that the globalists have, they really um, want to promulgate war. They want chaos. They want disarmament. They want the spread of super plagues. They want destruction and chaos because that way they can maintain total control and hide... throw a couple of other news items out there, Tim, and get your uh, comments. We have, by the way, I'm going to open up open lines too for people to ask questions on any geopolitical, uh, spiritual issue, or health issue. 800-259-5791, 800-259-5791. Uh, we're uh, trying to get Chris Putnam on the third hour to talk about the uh, possible uh, consequences of this. Um, just wanted to list the things that I expect may well uh, be factors, not necessarily setting dates or times. This year we're going to hit the wall in terms of the debt ceiling. Uh, the little uh, dance to try to avoid it with the two parties, I call the Republic crap and the Democrat. By the way, you still get crap uh, from both parties, and I don't support any of the parties, and that includes, by the way, the Tea Party. None of them are, to me, adhering to real American principles of the Republic. We need to have a central banking system uh, that has proper rules of the road, like the Glass-Steagall, but we also need to have banks in every state. And a central bank that's owned by the people, we not, need, not uh, the Rothschilds. Right, and we want to make sure we boot the Rothschilds out and we take over our banking system. We don't owe interest to anybody except ourselves. This idea that we have to borrow money from countries like China is ridiculous. Uh, and the idea that we allow industrial espionage by China. Second thing I think that, that we're likely to see happen is the war in the Middle East is going to blow up. Uh, and it's really a nice edge because, as you said, you've done a better job of anybody showing that the military thing is that, and I was looking at a reporter this morning, that Syria's Assad is basically 
uh, saying, uh, you know, says not to abandon principles despite intensifying pressures. Syria is not going anywhere. Anybody with the, all these news reports are trying to say Syria is falling. They're taking back all their positions, and you're the first to say that. So yeah. that's number two. Um, number three is that if there was a falling Syria, it'll become a regional conflagration. It'll go nuclear very quickly because these thousands of missiles, and this is the reason why the Israelis attacked the munitions dump in Damascus. They're not worried about a former eye doctor that worked in Britain, in London, and his wife was going to school there, and he married her there. No, they're worried about these crazy Qatari, Saudi Arabian, Arab Emirate uh, uh, thugs, many of them released from prison, told, yeah, you go and kill Syrians or we're going to kill you on the spot. So they will give you 100000 to your family if you die, uh, but if you don't uh, leave now and fight the Syrians, we'll kill you now. So that's what the uh, that's the kind of the deal, the mafioso-style deal the, Syria, the Saudi Arabian government gave them. And... Um, what I see happening is the Saudi, um, the Sunni, Sunni Shiite war, which started about five years ago. The West got involved, and decided to bring in social networking in New York City about three and a half years ago, and the Arab Spring was completely managed by the West. Yeah, it was, it was um, and Obama was right behind the lockstep with support of the of the so-called uh, Al Qaeda terrorists. Benghazi is completely in operation to hand over guns and weapons. Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton, how I couldn't believe the. To quote last week, and I got to laugh at Alex. I mean, I, he really is uh, uh, quite a good comedian, too, when he gets down to the facts. But he said, you know, Quinnipiac University did this uh, poll that said Hillary Clinton was the most, you know, the favorite politician right now. And he says, you know, yeah, right after cancer and the Black Death and, you know, a whole other <laughs> things. Alex is really good at picking up these things. So I thought it was, that was pretty funny. I said, Alex, I got to 100% agree with you that. We got a situation here, but Assad's going nowhere. First Listen, off, she saved if he, this country a lot of money because when she was Secretary of State, she didn't have to fly around an Air Force plane. She had her own broomstick. broomstick <laughs> yeah, you're a funny guy. Funny <laughs> guy. I still think she used the uh, thing because it looks a little too obvious. Anyway, <laughs> so, so uh, what I see happening is she's preserving herself for 2016. She's a grand dame of the uh, high level Masons, and that's why. Uh, Mr. Kerry got appointed Secretary of State because she appointed him, period. Well, Kerry is one of these interesting people. He has an Irish name. And when he was running for president, he was so shocked when it came out that he he was actually Jewish. And uh, he, Oh, come on. He, he, didn't, know that's... he didn't know it. Just like oh, Matt yeah, yeah. He, like he didn't know. know that. He didn't know what the color of his hair or his eyes. Come on. Well, yeah. Well, man, yeah, like, right. you know, let's, let's, let's get real here. You know, he, the guy has advanced degrees. He's not an idiot, but he's a liar. So, um, are you yeah, saying right. that our leaders lie? I, you know what? I think that they actually couldn't know the truth if it hit them over the head <laughs> with a two by four. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that that's number two. Number three, I think we're going to have a bank holiday. It's probably sometime this year, and I don't expect that. Some people are reporting six, seven weeks. I think uh, probably five to ten days. But they're going to divide the currency at thirty to forty percent. So we're going to see your price of food and fuel go up about thirty to forty percent. Um, I expect that that will actually, believe it or not, be good for business because it means business is going to have to start having to come back to home. So you'll see factories and everything have to start moving here. And um, I think that the powers that be know that the American public are totally pissed that they've shipped all our business to China, and they're going to start moving some of it back. Well, uh, the Chinese, be, by the way, uh, are on the... good thing, but, you know, you don't have to destroy the country and the economy to do that. No, well, no, it's not going to destroy it, by the way. Believe it or not, devaluing the currency doesn't destroy the economy. What destroys the economy are regulations that make it impossible to set up a business here in 90 days to 60 as to uh, six months. Yeah, the, the I, problem I know is a fellow and, that owns a, a bread uh, company, a, ba- a bakery, makes yeah. bread for uh, you know a, a population base of probably three, four hundred thousand people. Yeah. And so he's got a, a good size operation, but it's not that big. Yeah. And uh, they, the government, the federal government, told him. He had to install scrubbers on his gas-fired ovens, uh, and these, this was $600,000 worth of uh, scrubbers that he had to install. Now, oh, what do you I guarantee, though, if, he, if you made that bread and, and you made that bread or something, you made a product in China and shipped it here, he wouldn't have any of those regulations. So well, of course not. What we, have, you know, what we have is a situation where the globalists and their minions are killing business in America, killing our energy independence, killing uh, our educational... Killing us with genetically modified food. But genetically modified, modified food. 
with all the other Big foolishness. And then now Obamacare, which basically is just as eugenic care. Let's call it what it is. It has, uh, and the other side is just getting your bank accounts and getting control of you. So it has nothing to do with health care. It has everything to do with how to control you. And most doctors won't participate with eugenic care, which is why they're going to quit. And I tell doctors, grow two balls, even if you're female. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And quit. Quit on mass. All you doctors out there, stop complaining. All you nurses, walk. W A L K, walk. You know what? If they did that, it would end up Obamacare and immediately the politicians would go, oh, we went too far. We've got well, it completely you know what's right so today. Amazing, and you can see this. Uh, my mother uh, is in a nursing home and has been in and out of the hospital. Right. She's almost 93 and, uh, and right. all this. And, and I have lots of friends that are physicians. And, uh, you know, I. Well, why are they complaining? Amazing. You know what? what you, yeah, when, you, when I was a doctor practicing and I. And I I closed my practice in 2004, and I still teach and consult doctors and patients all over the world, and I don't charge a cent. When I was told to compromise and kill patients and do this and that in hospital, or when I was a director of health health, I said, I'm not a hired gun and I'm not a murderer. But doctors have got to decide to grow some cojones and decide what are they. Well, you if have they haven't drawn a line in the sand, are they going to allow decisions to be made by politicians who are, by the way, in these, these ethics committees uh, that are setting up protocols, they're practicing medicine without a license. Well, and the only one who should practice is a doctor right there with the patient. You well, have just, it's more than even Big Pharma. It's Big Government wants to even go beyond Big Pharma. They want to temporarily uh, benefit Big Pharma and the uh, insurance industry, if, but if eventually they want to destroy them. If you have a certain health condition and your doctor doesn't prescribe certain types of, of pharmaceuticals for that and, and makes a consistent policy of, of not prescribing certain classes of ph pharmaceuticals for certain il illnesses, the other the license pulled. These are going to pick up on that because they survey all the the, the scripts. Right, they did it to me in 2003, and when the drug rep came into my office, it was, it was a shock. It was at that point when I realized I'm going to have to leave practice. Now these doctors just got their packet from Obamacare. Obamacare is an obscene person. Uh, the people back him, oh, Biden, uh, Hillary Clinton, who wanted to put Hillary Care in years ago. People have no idea just how evil this is. We're not talking about national health care. National health care in Canada is bad enough. They're allowing some private health care. By the way, they get eugenic care on steroids in Britain and Canada and all the socialist countries. The angel of death visits at night all the wards and kills a lot of people. Yes, yeah, because the fallen angel is in charge. Right. Believe it or not. 800-259-5791 if you have comments. We'll also be opening up open lines in hour two at the top of the hour. In the bottom of the hour, we'll have Ryan.